are an alliance of the second season of the rebooted Bakugan show. When the 2019 Invitationals happened, it was hyped up to insanity and everyone went nuts over it. Because Armored Alliance was going to introduce the new gimmick of the season to sell more plastic to children called Baku Gear, and then eventually introduce Bakugan Fusions, something that a lot of people would clamor to find. Coming into the new season, I'll be honest, I was pretty excited for it. Last season, they had that battle with Tigo and stopping Vestroyo from getting destroyed, and I was very curious to see what they would do with this season. You guys have probably seen my reviews for each of the episodes, and if you haven't, I suggest going back to watch those now, and a majority of the time, I actually gave the episodes a pretty glowing review. I like the subtle storytelling, the action, and the characters, and in all honesty, I wasn't expecting much from the show, since this is a show primarily targeted towards kids. But for a kids show, this was a a pretty impressive showing, and I could say the same for the previous season. Now since Geogun Rising has released and everyone is now watching that, I thought since I finished the reviews for Armored Alliance, I would give this season an overall star rating out of 10. This season really just continues from what happened last season with only little changes. The devices that can control Bakugan are now banned, there's more official tournaments for Bakugan battling, the awesome ones are renamed the Awesome Brawlers for some reason to the confusion of no one, everyone practically gets their voice roles repressed except for Shun who is now voiced by Jamie Jo Gonzaga instead of Takoon Kim. We get introduced to a new character called Ajit in the show who is an Auralist Brawler and the season practically spends its time slowly building him to join the Awesome Brawlers. I like that they slowly develop him as a character instead of shoving him into our faces right away and telling us to deal with it. Ajit really has this sense of mystery the first third of the season, trying to figure out who he is or what he's about. Turns out he's an apprentice phantom thief to Storm, who by the way I've become a pretty big fan of. It really just seems like the first third or so of the season, it's just slice of life stuff. Storm and Ajit and also the big Bakugan tournament that Benton organizes to improve Bakugan's PR. Meanwhile, there's also development for previous side characters like China Riot. Magnus returns and he's a very Batman-esque character now. There's new Bakugan that we instantly grow attached to and a lot of other stuff that happens. My only real criticism with this part is that the Bakugan Battle League almost seems relatively pointless or really it's used as sort of an afterthought to the Storm and Ajit story. And you know, it's not really entirely a bad thing if the endgame payoff was to make Ajit come back looking stronger and overcoming his character flaw. He's adopting more to being a Bakugan brawler, but he has to remain loyal to Storm, the one who raised him and gave him a life. I was super intrigued and behind that story going through the season, and it really intensified with the two th third mark. When we get introduced to the real villain of the season, Havoc. Some maniac alien that travels the universe destroying stuff and causing destruction for the sake of his own entertainment, or some show that goes on in his own head. Either way, he's a maniac that wants to destroy Earth and Vestroya to be funny. And the time here is just used to introduce and develop the ones who will join Havoc's team. McHugh, some failed businessman that wants revenge against Shun's family so he turns into a life of crime and illegal arms dealing in order to do that. Sophie, a clear parody of online SJWs and Karens trying to quote unquote save Bakugan. Everett, from last season, who becomes a Hollywood producer that turns into a very creepy obsessive stalker of Leah in ways of, that just makes me a tad uncomfortable. Kind of like a Harvey Weinstein parody. Oh god, I'm not even gonna bother getting into that. And of course, Storm, who really seems like he carries the team. This is pretty much what happens the rest of the season. It's just trying to stop Havoc's constant plans to quote unquote put on shows. We do get introduced to Ebony the cat later on that values power and she joins Team Havoc later and turns into a cat that loves revenge. While I do enjoy following the mayhem of Havoc this season, I can't say I got into what he was all about earlier in his appearances. Like yes, he's some evil alien that likes to destroy stuff and cause mayhem, that's his entire character, but it seems like he was just put there for the sake of plot and having a season. Heck, even Magnus joins in trying to stop him because he was trying to pursue a Q. And actually, in fact, it was Havoc that introduced the Fusion Bakugan line that would be the staple advertisements for the real-life toys for the rest of the season. In all honesty, it wasn't until the end of the Tokyo Battle League arc that I finally got some kind of underlying narrative going on with Havoc. It kinda seems like Havoc, the more time he spends on Earth, the more human he becomes. Because the Awesome Brothers failed his plans to destroy Tokyo and he says it was the first time he felt upset and eventually we see him doing random human things and even at the finale, he embraces being a Bakugan brawler. It just really seems like he was adopting the human life, kinda like humanizing him a little bit, just slowly, and knowing what it felt like or something like that. 
I don't know. That was my main interpretation of him. Out of all the villains that was on Team Havoc though, it was really Storm that caught the most attention. And it almost seems like he's Havoc's second in command. He is the only one that seems even the tad bit interesting. I mean, McCute does have personal reasons, Sophie though does not have personal reasons, and Everett is just plain creepy. But at least for Storm, his reasons are a lot more personal. And no, I'm not saying this because he uses Hydranoid Extra Kelios or that his voice actor is a fan of mine. I mean it when I say Storm's probably my new favorite character in the show, second only to Magnus. He's clearly a character that has a lot of experience, he's a genuine father figure to Ajit, and he's a powerful adversary with a lot of motivation and in-depth character work going. He wants Ajit to become a phantom thief like him, but Ajit wants to be his own person, he gets angry because it seems like he was losing the one person he loved, Havoc controlling him seems like it pushed him to the point of insanity, and Ajit still cares for him, there's just so much internal drama going on within him, and it really is what makes him a very unique character. God, what is it with Spin Master and their characters with masks being the best ones? Another character I was a little interested in was Ebony the Cat because I thought that she would take on a more anti-hero role. She seems very conflicted with being good or evil and it especially showed in the episode where Lightning gets kidnapped by Strata. But in all honesty, I think Team Havoc really carried this season for their whole villain lineup, but I was majorly disappointed with how they didn't get a proper sign off in the end. And regarding the awesome brothers and their Bakugan, well, they did the usual, there's a superhero team that will save the two worlds, there's really nothing else changed about them, it's still the same old except with Dragon Lord Infinity instead of Maximus because they needed their big super toy for the year. Looks cool, but it's practically the same thing, just different pile. But seeing Dan being evil was a pretty awesome arc. Now something I've been really critical about are the filler episodes. Now don't get me wrong, I think filler is fine, but as long as it's used to introduce character, enhance character, gives good messages, or just written good with all of the above. I really enjoyed the Gilator episode because of its subliminal message about racism. And you know at the time of my review of that episode going up, the Black Lives Matters protests were going on in the wake of George Floyd's death, which to me gave the episode a lot more meaning. The Emily and China Riot episode, I really liked, China Riot and Barbatro episode I enjoyed, just filler episodes that have something that it can offer and not just be there for the sake of wasting time, is what I really enjoy, and my god the circus episode was a gigantic waste of time. And I find it pretty insulting it was put in the same slot as an Ebony episode. And the ending to the season was a, uh, you know, alright. Havoc really should have been arrested instead of just being allowed to get away like that. It would have been like a performer getting the hook off of the stage. You had an epic fight, an epic war between Havoc and Sabra against Dragonoid Infinity with the world, even to the point where Sabra and Infinity had a huge dick measuring contest. And you end it with just letting Havoc get away? Nah, nah, that's fine guys, at least it's not destroying Earth. Not very hero-like, especially for the awesome brawlers and even Magnus who was there. Heck, Tico came back and Rob Tickler just nails the role as usual. The other Golden Bakugan return, we gotta sell some toys somehow, except for Gorillion that we won't see in the toy form. And I really shed a tear when Drago, Trox, Pegatrix, Halcor, and all the awesome brawlers Bakugan have to leave to heal up. It really was feeling like saying goodbye to creatures we've become attached to, and it was pretty decent ending to this season. The season lasted longer than Battle Planet did, and it was a pretty alright season. For this, I'm giving it a good 9 stars out of 10. This season was very decent, with its storytelling and multiple character work, and the voice acting and action continues to be on point. I know I probably missed a few things, but this video is already getting long enough as it is. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and what your personal score was. But the overall takeaway from this is that Armored Alliance was a pretty great season that carried through the year. I was willing to be lenient about it in light of the whole pandemic going on production wise, but the voice acting and quality really has not been affected. And it just seems like with all my talking that's gotten even better, which is pretty impressive. And I can't wait to see how Geogon Rising will top this. With Geogon Rising being revealed as going to be shorter than Armored Alliance, I'm hoping less filler and more story and character. Armored Alliance was amazing and I'm glad I sat through this whole season. And I hope you all sat through this whole video to see this part because I wanted to let you know that a majority of you watching are not subscribed to this channel right now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as it will help support us to bring you more awesome Bakugan content. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!